and welcome to chapter 8 of the string tutorial for beginners so in chapter 7 we talked about uh, the string mvc uh, module and we saw how we can use spring web uh, to tie or to attach a front end or a user interface to our uh, application right now in this chapter we're going to see how we can create a simple uh, api a rest api using uh, the spring web module so for the project, for the demo, I have already created uh, this project Spring MVC demo. And let's take a look at the dependencies for this project. Let's go inside POM and check out the dependencies. So for the dependencies, we have Spring Boot Starter, Spring Boot Starter Test. So uh, Spring Boot Starter is going to provide uh, the basic uh, Spring Core dependencies to our project. And then we have Spring Boot Starter Web. So this is going to make our uh, application a web application, and it can be consumed over uh, uh, over the over the internet, or it can be uh, it can be exposed as a REST API, which can be consumed by calling a URL that we expose. So that is what uh, Spring Starter Web is going to do. And then we have Spring Boot Starter Dev to uh, Spring Boot Dev Tool. So that is going to help us uh, with developing the application so every time we make a save so I'll restart the application and uh, get the changes reflect uh, yeah so that's basically it for the dependencies and apart from this we also have this class which basically acts as uh, the entry point for our application and it has the main method and it gets generated when we create uh, when we when we create the new uh, spring uh, starter project right so we have the main method inside our application inside this class and we have this uh, spring boot application annotation on top of this class right so first up what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class I'm going to create a new class and uh, I'm going to name it a uh, student controller right and we're going to put it inside uh, com.demo.controller package right let's click on finish so if you guys remember in the previous chapter we have already seen this uh, diagram and this is basically the architecture diagram for the spring mvc module or the spring web module and uh, when we have a, when we have an http request coming in it is intercepted by the dispatcher servlet and then the dispatcher servlet goes to the handler mapping to decide which controller it needs to go to and then it goes to the controller and then from there it, it's it tries to find out if there's a if there's a view attached to it if there's a view attached to the request by going to the request resolver and then if there's a, a view attached to the request it gets the view rendered to the user right or if there's no view if it is just a rest controller or if it is just uh, an api that we have exposed that would uh, that that is supposed to uh, throw out or that is supposed to uh, you know give a json response then it just uh, it just gives the JSON response, right? So, okay, so we have our controller here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another class. So this is going to be our model class, right? Or this is going to be our POJO class. So I'm going to say student, right? And I'm going to put this inside com .demo .model package. Click on finish. And inside this, let's say we have two variable, two attributes called private uh, string name and private uh, int roll number, right? Roll number. And I'm gonna create. Uh, I'm gonna generate the getters and setters for this class for the attributes of this class let's say select all okay
All right, we have our, our model ready. Now inside the controller class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to annotate this as rest controller. Right. So when we have this annotation on top of a class, it basically tells Spring that this is supposed to be treated as a rest controller. So if we go back to our diagram, if we go back to our architecture diagram, this is the part that we're trying to build in this inside this class, right? So we are building the controller, right? And when we say this is supposed to be a rest controller, we are essentially telling Spring that we do not have a view attached to this request. And this request is supposed to be, uh, or uh, this this application or this controller. The, we, we are not. We, we do not have a view attached to this controller, and this controller is supposed to act as a REST controller, which gives out maybe a JSON response or maybe an XML response or maybe a response of any other type that is supported by REST, right? So this controller is supposed to act as a REST controller. And uh, the difference between a controller and a REST controller is that a controller may be associated with a view for which we need to go to the view resolver and resolve uh, a view if the, the request is attached to a view. But a REST controller is not, not supposed to be attached to a view. So we are specifically telling Spring that this controller is not supposed to be attached to a view, right? So now I'm going to create uh, the get the request mapping right so first before that I'll just put an annotation here uh, request mapping right and I say uh, slash API slash v1 right and Okay, before this, I would say slash student slash API slash v1, right? And here I would say get mapping, right? And uh, I would say uh, path equals slash uh, get fetch by id right and application slash json produces application json right and here i would say public string or say public student uh get student by id right and this would take in uh, the roll number so i would say int roll number right and I'll get the imports and i would create a new object of student here so i'd say student student equals new new student right and i would say student dot set name test name right and i would say student dot set roll number and let's set the roll number that is coming in right and i'd return student right so what we are basically doing here is we are providing a request mapping which is essentially a get mapping so this is supposed to be a get uh, get call to our api so the method that we set for uh, calling this api should be get 
and we are setting the path as slash fetch by id so this is going to be the endpoint for our api and this is going to be uh, the resource which we are trying to fetch right and we are saying that this produces application json so the the content type of the request is application json right and inside this method we are uh, taking in in this method we are taking in this role number parameter as input parameter and we are creating an object of student so ideally we should be having a service layer service layer injected into this class and we should be making a call to the service layer to fetch our uh, student or fetch our result or fetch our response from the backend but for the demo we're just creating a we're just creating the student object here and we're returning the student object right now let's test this uh, application so before running this I would just open up application dot properties and I would set the server dot port to say 8383 right so our application is not run on uh, port 8383 right and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say run as a Spring Boot app So one thing I would like to mention here, since we have this dependency, since we have this dependency of Spring Startup Web in our uh, build path or in our uh, bomb.xml, what this does is it embeds a Tomcat server in our application. So we have a and uh, an embedded Tomcat server in our application and our application would be running on the same uh, Tomcat server and we need not you know deploy our uh, code or our application to a server to run it an external server to run it right so what I'm done what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up postman and I'll try to hit the URL or I'll try to hit the, the API that we just created. So I'm going to say localhost C-A-L-H-O-S-T localhost uh, 8383 so our code or our application is running on 8383 right. We can check it here. We have this running on 8383 and we're trying to hit what this URL right. So we're going to say student slash API slash v1 this is what our complete URL would look like slash face by ID okay so we would need to mention uh, the request parameter here so I would say the red request param and this is going to take in the roll number so so that we are able to send this as a request parameter right so I would say roll number and I would send in a parameter so let's say roll number equals say 12 right so here we can see in postman we have this uh, query param roll number is 12 right and So once we save this, once we save, once we make made the change, and once we save this, we can see our application got auto deployed, and the uh, the changes must have reflected, just as we did a new deployment, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this send, and see how our uh, response looks like. Okay, so I need to put this as well, fetch by ID, right, in the path. So after V1, I would need to put this fetch by ID and I'll just send it again. So we have our response, right? We 
we have the name as test name and this roll number is being taken from the request parameter that we are sending right now instead of 12 we could have sent anything we could have sent 10 and click on send and see uh, this this gets updated accordingly right so this is a very basic uh, API a REST API that we just created and there's a lot of stuff that we can do with this uh, REST control with the REST API support that Spring provides or the REST API module that Spring provides and this is all for this chapter and in the next chapter we're gonna talk about post uh, post mapping and uh, we're gonna see how we can send in post requests for our APIs and we're also gonna see how we can validate our response in our request uh, our request bodies or our request parameters that come in and we are also going to see how we can uh, handle exceptions in our next uh, chapter right so that's all for this chapter and uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching